After marrying the campus belle, I treated her with the utmost care. However, she secretly aborted our child. At the hospital entrance, she leaned on her brother's shoulder and said to me, If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have missed my brother. All of this is your own fault. In the end, to keep things quiet, she hired a hitman to kill me. When I woke up again, I found myself back on the day I proposed to her. Her so-called brother, with indifferent eyes, handed me a blank check. Marry her or take the money. You choose. I smiled slightly and politely accepted with both hands. Twenty million. I wish the Game of Thrones relationship a lifetime of happiness. Long live true love. Ha. You just graduated. Do you even earn three thousand a month? How dare you think you can marry my sister? You're just a worthless nobody. Hearing this familiar voice, I forced myself to open my eyes. Elias looked at me with disgust. When I heard you were going to propose to my sister, I had to admit you had some tricks. But unfortunately, birds of a feather flocked together. Looking around, I saw golden and pink confession balloons everywhere, and a marry me banner hanging high on the wall. The engagement ring was tightly clenched in my hand. I finally realized I had been reborn. On this day in my previous life, I proposed to Gloria the same way, only to be humiliated by Elias and forced to leave her. At that time, I was blinded by love and refused without hesitation. In the end, I died miserably. Seeing my lack of response, he impatiently pulled a check from his inner pocket and handed it to me. Break up with Gloria, fill in any amount you want, and never see her again. Understand? Gloria, standing by my side, hooked her arm around mine and looked at Elias with some defiance, but more so with clear affection. I sneered inwardly. In my previous life, I foolishly married Gloria, becoming a pawn in their wealthy family games. This time, without further ado, I accepted the check in their siblings' shocked eyes and nodded satisfactorily. A grand president wouldn't go back on his word, right? I mean, I can really fill in any amount? Of course. It's worth spending a bit of money to show Alia what kind of person you are. All right, I'll accept this great fortune. You are such a good brother. I don't know how to repay you. In the next life, if you become an ox or a horse, I'll make sure to pull the grass for you to eat. Before he could respond, I walked into the bank next door with the check, quickly filling in the amount. I looked at the newly credited money in my account and smiled contentedly. The next second, my phone rang. I pressed the green answer button, and Elias is deep. Trembling voice came through. 20 million. You really dared to ask for it. In my previous life, I married the campus bell. Gloria. It felt like a blessing earned over eight lifetimes. So, I didn't care when people said I was marrying into a wealthy family or that I was living off her money. Until a classmate sent me a few photos. Is this your wife? Dressed so skimpily. Drinking mouth to mouth with this guy? He's practically on top of her. And guess what happened next? They went straight upstairs to get a room. I was stunned. In the photo, it was her brother, Elias. Every time she went out, she said she was drinking with her girlfriends and that I shouldn't worry because her brother would be there. But to think it was actually, at that moment, my head felt like it was going to explode. This is classic cheating. I immediately found Gloria. She was nestled in Elias's arms and glanced at me lightly. He's not my real brother. We have different parents. It doesn't matter. Do you want a divorce? Marco. Recognize your place. You are just a live-in son-in-law. If you don't have a brain, at least look in the mirror to see what a joke you are. You really are sick. Gloria, how did you become like this? I was shaking with anger. She chuckled lightly and tossed me a piece of paper. It was an abortion consent form. While I'm still young, of course, I want to enjoy life. So, let's just feel sorry for your little baby. But if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have missed out on my brother. If you hadn't investigated us, you could have turned a blind eye and life would have gone on. Now, this is all your own fault. Elias looked at Gloria with indulgence. With him as cover. Isn't it easier for us to be together? It turned out I was the fool. Just a pawn in their play. I couldn't take it anymore and punched him. Elias looked at me provocatively and waved his hand. Immediately, a group of security guards rushed out and beat me into the hospital. A few days later, Gloria kicked me out of the company and took all my money. Until the day I was discharged, I was still thinking about how to get revenge on them, but a speeding truck with failed brakes came straight at me and knocked me out. So, why wouldn't I dare take the 20 million? Not only did I dare to take it, but I also thought it was too little. In my previous life, even though I was a son-in-law of a wealthy family and the general manager of a company, I lived very frugally, rarely having five figures in savings. So now, 
facing Elias's gritted teeth questioning over the phone. I laughed. What's wrong? Mr. Ellis, does this little bit of money hurt you? Didn't you like to show off in front of Gloria? To be honest, I actually prefer the arrogant way you handed me the check earlier. All right, all right, Marco, you better have the guts to spend that money. He angrily hung up the phone, looking at the balance in my bank account. I let out a long breath and took a taxi to the luxury car dealership. Once, Gloria said she was afraid I would change my heart if I had money, so she made me willingly hand over my salary card. I closed a multi-million project and discussed with Gloria about replacing my old Ford, but she disagreed, saying that if it still worked, there was no need to be extravagant, and that it was better to keep a low profile in high positions. Then she turned around and bought herself a red Ferrari and gifted her brother the latest model McLaren. I was as stupid as a pig, so the first thing I did now was to buy a sports car. By chance, I ran into Gloria and Elias, the affectionate siblings, at the car dealership. Gloria saw me first, with a somewhat proud tone. Brother, I told you Marco would regret it. He said he'd never leave me in this lifetime. See, here he is. Elias sneered and reached out his hand to me. If you don't have the guts, return the money. I smiled faintly, my gaze passing over them to a brand new black Lamborghini behind them. Matte paint, sleek body lines. I pointed at it. This car is nice. Can I pick it up today? The saleswoman beamed with joy and swayed her hips as she walked up to me. Boss, you have great taste. This car was reserved, but the buyer just cancelled. She glanced at Elias, whose face was dark. I instantly understood what was going on. In my previous life, after rejecting Elias, he mocked me angrily. Look at the numbers in your account. You couldn't earn that much in several lifetimes. I clearly saw the balance then, 20 million and 53 yuan. So now he couldn't even afford a car, but his mouth was still hard taking my 20 million breakup fee and coming to spend it. Little Lee, look at what kind of boyfriend you've got. TSK TSK. Gloria's face was shocked. 20 million? Marco, are you out of your mind? Why did you take my brother's 20 million? He was just testing your feelings for me. Stop this nonsense and return the money. I dug both hands into my pockets, pretending to search. Seeing this, Elias's face softened, and he started acting again. Oh. It's just 20 million. Little Lee, no need to be angry. Spending 20 million to see a scumbag clearly is worth it. I pulled out my bank card and paid in full. The saleswoman even added me on WeChat for future maintenance services. Under their stunned gazes, I drove away in the sports car. That night, Gloria called, saying she was downstairs at my place. I lazily slipped into my slippers and went downstairs. I originally didn't want to pay her any mind, but I couldn't help my curiosity. How would she react knowing I agreed to break up with her for money? After all, back in school, this campus bell could make countless men fawn over her with just a flick of her finger. I reached the bottom of the apartment building, and under the dim evening sky, it started to drizzle. A bright yellow umbrella appeared, raindrops falling on its surface. In the midst of the rain and mist, I saw half of a face revealed under the umbrella. Gloria stepped towards me, step by step awkwardly tilting the umbrella over my head. She pouted. Why aren't you here to coax me yet? I admit, she had a very pretty face. At that moment, her eyes were filled with tears of grievance. Her small nose was red, and she looked utterly broken. Seeing I didn't respond, she carefully clutched the corner of my shirt. Tears clung to her long eyelashes, making her look like a pitiful little kitten on the verge of crying. Marco, are you really going to break up with me? She deliberately spoke in a whiny voice making my skin crawl. Her fake display of emotions made my stomach churn. I nodded and said seriously, yes, we are breaking up. How can you compare to 20 million? Don't come looking for me anymore. It would just make your brother misunderstand, considering I took his money. Goodbye. Gloria's pitiful expression instantly vanished, her face turning dark. Give the money back to my brother and obediently marry me. If you marry me, you can have as much money as you want. This is your only chance. Marry your head get lost. I resisted the urge to slap her and turned to head back home. She stood there stunned, probably never having been insulted so badly in her life. But soon she shamelessly followed me. Just as I was opening the door, she slipped inside ahead of me, yanking my arm to pull me in. In the next second, Gloria pressed me against the wall, wrapping her arms around my neck, her breath warm against my ear. Punish me. Just give the money back to my brother, and I'll do whatever you want. As she said this, her small hand tugged at my shirt, skillfully moving downwards. 
My mind went blank for a moment, and my whole body tensed up. Reflexively, I grabbed her arms with both hands. Gloria instinctively wrapped her arms around my neck, a playful smile spreading across her face. Stop being so mean. Be gentle with me. I fought back the nausea and leaned close to her face, my lips stopping just short of her ear. Will you really do anything I ask? She nodded, placing her slender arm on my chest, tracing circles with her fingertips. Yes, I want to marry you, then bark like a dog. What? In the next second, I flipped her over my shoulder, throwing her onto the ground by the door. With a bang, I shut the door. After a moment, Gloria kicked the door hard, her voice sharp. Marco, how dare you treat me like this? Are you crazy? Fine, you better not regret this. Leaving those harsh words, there was no more noise outside the door. So my next plan is to buy a house and move to a place where they can't find me, to avoid being harassed by these so-called siblings. I was looking at houses on my phone late into the night when I suddenly heard a noise at the door. A familiar smell wafted into my nose. It was gasoline. Elias's sinister face quickly flashed through my mind. Not good. I rushed out the door. A mysterious figure wearing a black hat froze for a moment, then dropped the half-full bottle of gasoline and ran. By the time I chased them downstairs, they had vanished. I took out my phone to call the police. But suddenly, an unbearable pain hit the back of my head. The next second, the world spun, and I lost consciousness. I was awakened by cold water, facing an elderly man with a full head of white hair. He leaned back indifferently in his chair, with a strong, aggressive face, looking down at me. You got my daughter pregnant and swindled my godson's money. Who gave you the guts? His brows were furrowed with a dark expression, and his murderous intent seemed even heavier. I looked around in horror. The bodyguards around us were expressionless and stood straight. Their waists bulged with hidden objects, unknown to me. Gloria's father, clearly a company chairman, was acting like a mob boss. Wait, I had returned to the point in time of the proposal. I hadn't even touched Gloria yet, but her father said I got her pregnant, which means the child she carried in the previous life was not mine. It turned out she had been pregnant with Elias's child all along. Afraid of her father finding out and blaming Elias, she hurriedly married me to find a father for the child. Then she lost the child from fooling around with Elias, and I went crazy, desperate to fight them, losing my life in the process. I slapped myself hard, feeling furious, and Gloria blamed me for making her miss Elias. Thinking of those unbearable memories, I couldn't help but laugh at myself. I looked up and met his puzzled gaze, directly revealing the truth. I never slept with her. The child she carried was Elias's, and the 20 million was a breakup fee from Elias. If you don't believe me, investigate yourself. The room fell silent, even though the air conditioning was on. The bodyguards were sweating. Poof. Gloria's father sneered and picked up a cigar from the table. I tactfully stepped forward to light it for him. He bit down on the cigar but didn't smoke it, his eyes narrowing with an unclear expression. After a long time, he spoke in a deep voice. I will investigate this matter personally. Disobedient dogs will have their legs broken and teeth pulled out, obediently staying by my daughter's side the nearest bodyguard, receiving the order, bowed and left the room. My mind was racing, my heart pounding. Then I, 20 million, do you think our family's money is that easy to take? He looked at me, his cold voice echoing in my ears. You will take over Elias's matters. I will give you an identity for public appearance. He pulled out a photo from the drawer and placed it in front of me. Deal with this woman and achieve a marriage alliance. Divorce is fine later, and I won't pursue the 20 million anymore. The woman in the photo had legs longer than my life. She lounged lazily on a sofa, her eyes exuding a lofty arrogance as if the world meant nothing to her. I had seen her in my previous life. She was the woman Elias wanted to marry. It was said that Elias used some underhanded methods to get her, but her people knocked out a row of his teeth. In the end, the marriage alliance failed, and she gracefully went abroad to study. Scared? Transfer the money back and leave. My heart tightened. No. She seems hard to get. I'll need more money. At the company meeting, I stood respectfully beside the chairman, wearing an expensive custom-made suit. Elias sat dejectedly next to Gloria, his expression unreadable. Gloria's eyes burned with intense hatred as she looked at me. The atmosphere was silent as the chairman announced that Elias was relieved of all his duties and that he and Gloria were to be engaged. With a wedding date set, I was to take over Elias's responsibilities. The chairman even gave me a prestigious title as his new godson. Unfortunately, I didn't care. I just wanted to take the money and run, living my carefree life. 
but it wasn't that easy. After the meeting, Elias deliberately blocked my way at the door, gritting his teeth. Marco, I really underestimated your tactics. Let's see how long you can keep this up. Who do you think you are? Security, get him out of here. I waved my hand, and several security guards hurried over. Elias's face instantly darkened, and he angrily shook off the guards' hands, sneering, Ha! I should thank you for taking care of Gloria for three years in college, you useless coward. Can't you do anything? No wonder Gloria keeps thinking of me every night. Even with your pathetic tricks, she could never fall for you. I found it amusing. Gloria had said she wanted to save her most precious memories for our wedding day, so I respected her. Someone can pretend for three years in front of another. It wasn't her acting skills that were so good, it was that I was too stupid. Elias, with his frail frame and pale face behind gold-rimmed glasses, had a bit of a sickly charm. I shrugged and casually said, hands in my pockets, with a faint smile, good thing she likes you. You at home in an apron, being a cute house husband, should be quite nice. Don't worry, I'll manage the company well and won't disappoint my godfather. So, please, just get lost. Elias's veins bulged in his neck as he clenched his fist and charged at me, aiming for my jaw. The security guard swiftly intercepted him, causing him to fall to the ground. Ah, you bunch of turncoats, I'll fire all of you. Gloria rushed over at the sound, striding to Elias's side to help him up. Brother, what happened? Elias suppressed his anger and adopted a dark, sinister demeanor, speaking with a hint of despondency. The new general manager Wang wanted to ask me something. But I didn't expect him to get physical. Never mind. Let's just say I fell by accident. Let's go. Gloria, I don't want to stay here and be humiliated anymore. He weakly rubbed his arm. Even the nearby guards rolled their eyes. Yes, a true man can endure setbacks. But Gloria was extremely distressed. Her anger flaring. Marco, what are you pretending for? You're nothing but a dog my dad keeps in our house. Didn't expect you to be such a scheming dog. Don't worry. You will pay for harming my brother. I glanced coldly at Elias. Look at your pathetic state. Even a rabbit doesn't eat the grass by its burrow. Do you think you deserve the chairman's trust? Getting yourself hurt and then trying to blame others. Are you going to cry and call for your mommy next? And you, Gloria, you dare talk about making me pay after cheating on me? Has your brain been licked clean by a dog? The crowd around us grew, looking at Elias with disdain. The atmosphere turned silent. Gloria furrowed her brows and spoke coldly, Marco, you'll regret this. She paused, don't forget my last name. After they left, I felt a bit restless, sitting in the luxurious office. Everything suddenly felt unreal. It was as if a pair of hands were pushing me into the abyss from behind. Having died once, I cherished life more than anyone. I received instructions from the chairman to attend the dinner party punctually to discuss the first meeting of the two groups' marriage alliance. I understood very well the importance of this alliance. It was like 1 plus 1 equals more than 2 in terms of benefits. The weather was a bit muggy as summer approached. I practiced my expressions in front of the mirror repeatedly. When I arrived at the banquet hall, the lavish and elegant decorations made the whole scene look like a fairyland. Money is another name for superpower. Is this your godson? He is really handsome. The speaker was a middle-aged woman, but her skin was well-maintained, looking like she was in her 30s. I nodded politely at her and walked over to sit next to the chairman. What's he doing here? Dad, can someone throw him out? He makes me sick just by being here. An untimely voice sounded. It was Gloria. Elias smirked coldly, Marco, this is not a place for someone like you. Get lost and stop embarrassing our family. The chairman's face turned somber as he coldly spat out two words, shut up. Gloria and Elias exchanged puzzled glances. After a while, the door of the hall opened again. The sound of high heels echoed in my ears, and everyone's eyes focused on the woman who walked in. She wore a dark blue long dress that hugged her curvy figure. The crystal tassels of her earrings dangled over her fair and sexy collarbones. Her face was expressionless, yet she exuded an aura that warned others to keep their distance. Elias stood up abruptly, a smile spreading across his face, Misty E, long time no see. She pretended not to hear him and sat directly across from me. At that moment. I was enjoying Gloria's slightly awkward expression. How could anyone stand their fiancé so openly flirting with another woman? Are you the one I'm supposed to marry? Marriage is precious and beautiful. Without love, it's no different from being in prison. I don't agree. I've said my piece. I'm leaving. From sitting down to stating her position and leaving, it took less than a minute. What a woman with character. Misty's parents didn't show any surprise on their faces. 
Elias was eager to chase after her, but his current status held him back. The chairman gave me a look, and I stood up. Misty didn't walk fast. The cool breeze outside dissipated the lingering heat. Her tone was slightly displeased. Why are you following me? Did you not understand what I said? I quickened my pace and stopped in front of her. Her beautiful features looked even more exquisite under the streetlights. This wasn't just an ice-cold beauty. She was my lifeline. I took a deep breath. I can give you an irresistible reason. Let's cooperate. Soon, the news of my marriage to Misty spread throughout the circle, shattering everyone's perceptions. During this period, I was busy with the new project contracts and occasionally went on dates with Misty. Although she found these staged dates quite boring, she still patiently cooperated with me. No choice. There were always tales following us when we went out. On the day we made the official announcement, I posted a not-so-intimate wedding photo. To make it seem more affectionate, I added a caption. I want to get drunk with you. To declare my love in the most extravagant way, I even tagged her. Two minutes later, the message I sent her had a red exclamation mark. But fortunately, everyone believed it. At least the chairman did. And with my previous life's rich experience, I handled the company's business quite smoothly making him very satisfied. I just didn't expect an unexpected visitor in my office. Try it on. I specially chose this watch for you. Gloria took out an exquisite Panda Daytona watch from the box, her eyes smiling. She was indeed a genuine heiress, but in my previous life, all the gifts she gave me after we got married were knockoffs. Seeing my cold expression, she eagerly held up my arm. Give me a break. I kind of miss you. I glanced at her abdomen. She quickly understood her eyes reddening slightly, it's gone, Marco, why have you suddenly become so heartless towards me, a sparkling tear silently fell from her eyes, tell me, were our three years together a lie, I now understand that my feelings for Elias are just sibling affection, I was wrong, I will cut ties with him, and I will explain everything to dad, do you know, seeing you with another woman always makes me feel bad, she hastily wiped her tears and looked up at me with deep emotion, can we get back together, once, even a slight frown from Gloria would make me extremely anxious, let alone her shedding tears. But now, I just shook my head. Believing her again would be as bad as eating dirt. She wrapped her arms around my back, her face gently pressed against me. It felt disgusting. I wanted to turn and push her away, but she held on tighter, murmuring. Just one minute, the glass door was pushed open, and Elias entered, his eyes red with anger. Gloria, what do you mean by this? Elias stood gloomily at the door. Marco, you're seducing her? Disgusting pretty boy. Gloria slapped Elias hard and then took out a thick stack of photos from her bag, throwing them in his face. Colorful, indescribable photos scattered all over the floor. All of Elias with different women in intimate moments. He played really hard. No wonder he looked so haggard. Elias picked up the photos from the floor, his eyes showing a hint of terror. Then he stared at me intently. Did you set me up? I thought the cheating I faced in my previous life was disgusting enough, but the cheating on Gloria was even higher by a few dozen meters. This feeling must be terrible. No wonder Gloria came running to reconcile with me. Enough, Elias. Compared to how good Marco has been to me, you are nothing. I never want to see you again. I waved my hand. Wait, my place isn't a trash recycling center. Gloria's face darkened. Then she continued speaking to Elias. If it weren't for you seducing me, I wouldn't have missed out on such a good man like Marco. I'm going to show these evidences to my dad, and you'll never set foot in the one family again. This is all your own fault. You still want to marry me? Get lost. Elias glared at me with hatred. It's not true. Gloria, these photos are photoshopped by Marco. I never did those things. Gloria sneered. Then are the red marks on your neck mosquito bites? Do you take me for a fool? Elias grabbed her, unwilling to let go. I don't believe it. Gloria, you clearly said I'm the one you love most. You should trust me. I quietly exited the office, not caring about their tug of war. Gloria has never loved anyone. What she loves is the feeling of being loved. Arriving at the parking lot, I received two messages. One was from Gloria. Marco, I was blind before, but can you not marry Misty? Give me more time, and I will make you fall in love with me again. Swipe left. Delete. The other was from Misty. Did you like the gift I sent you? Let's start the action. I don't like waiting. So it turns out those photos were taken by someone hired by Misty. No wonder she hated Elias so much in my previous life. A few days later, I went to the chairman's office with a contract for him to sign. He was reading a book, and I didn't dare to disturb him. 
Habitually, I made him a cup of tea and stood by his side, waiting. I waited the entire afternoon. The sky outside had darkened, but he didn't lift his eyes once. He finally took a sip of tea and spoke. You've done well. I was planning to give you your freedom soon, but yesterday my daughter told me that she will marry no one but you. She cried and made such a fuss that it gave me a headache. What do you think I should do? From that sentence, I understood his intentions. He leaned back in his chair, savoring his tea. You and she were together for three years in college. I saw how good you were to her. So what if she dated Elias or other men? It's normal for young girls to play around. Besides, I can tell you're different from those men. I only have one daughter. After you divorce Misty, stay by her side. I'll let you manage the company. Doesn't the idea of rising to the top sound appealing? I can't be with Gloria. I spoke calmly, standing up straight. His expression changed slightly. It's normal for young people to have tempers. But you only have one life. Faced with this blatant threat, I wasn't surprised at all. What do you take me for? She will just drag me back into hell. If I am to marry, I will choose the person who waits for me at home with lights on, rather than the one who will betray me. This time, the chairman didn't respond. He wearily signed the contract and handed it to me, telling me to leave. I tightly held the contract and rushed out of the office towards the elevator. As the elevator doors were closing, Gloria came running out. She seemed like she wanted to say something. Thankfully, I pressed the close button about 80 times in one second. Misty's red sports car was parked downstairs, and I ran towards her. Behind me, a group of men holding baseball bats emerged, their faces filled with malice, chasing after me. I got into the sports car, urging her to start the engine quickly. In her moment of hesitation, the car window was already smashed. I used my hand to block it, and several pieces of glass lodged into my flesh. She quickly came to her senses, stepped on the gas, and sped away. I also threw my phone out of the bag. The contract is signed, and he's already showing signs of illness. The car stopped at a gas station along the coastal highway, and I handed the contract to Misty. We were working to gradually bring the E family into the picture to devour the Lee family bit by bit. If I hadn't spent so much time in the company in my previous life, this task wouldn't have been possible. Misty adjusted her long hair by her ear and spoke softly. You really have a ruthless heart. Is his Alzheimer's disease very serious? I looked into the distance and gently replied. Yes, after this, it might get even worse. After all, he was the one who first thought of killing me. That day in the office, when he asked me to replace Elias, I knew he had murder in his heart towards me. Otherwise, he wouldn't have planted something on my phone and had someone monitor me 24-7. If I truly married Misty, I would certainly die unexpectedly somewhere. Who would really trust an outsider? Even just now, after I contradicted him a few times, he immediately sent people to deal with me. A person like him can't tolerate even a grain of sand in his eyes. I took out another small backup phone and looked at the balance in my bank account, letting out a long breath. This money was really hard to get. Misty glanced up at me, not bad. You're a multi-millionaire now. It was rare to hear her make a joke, and I smiled bitterly, shaking my head. I just got back what I earned through hard work, according to our agreement. She would send me abroad next. This was partly for my protection and partly because she needed enough time to devour the Lee family's assets. I learned from Misty that the Lee family had done many heinous things in their early years to make money. Suddenly, a shooting star streaked across the sky. I opened the car door and looked up to admire the beautiful night. Misty seemed to notice too and got out of the car. As the meteor passed, I heard the roar of a car engine. Turning to look, a black car was rushing toward us. Through the windshield, I saw a ferocious angry face Elias. I didn't have time to think and threw myself at Misty, rolling several times until we landed on the grass outside the road barrier. The sports car was hit by Elias, flipped over on the slope by the sea, and sank into the ocean. Elias, with his face covered in blood, crawled out of his car, wearing a crazed and sinister smile. He ran manically to the edge of the cliff, shouting, ha ha ha, serves you right, you and Gloria can meet in hell. A chill ran through me. Misty broke free from my hold, stood up, and ran towards Elias. I realized this wasn't good and quickly followed. Elias now looked like a mad killer. Cold, harsh words came from Misty's mouth, my car. As soon as she finished speaking, she jumped up, her long legs sweeping in midair, and her foot landed heavily on Elias's face. Wow, she's trained. I was stunned for a moment, and Elias had already been kicked numerous times, unable to fight back. I ran over and held Misty tightly. Stop it. If you keep hitting him, he'll die. 
Wouldn't it be better to keep him alive and make him contribute to society by doing some menial work? Death is too easy for him. Misty finally stopped. The air was silent for a few seconds before she turned her head, her gaze icy, how long are you going to hold me? I quickly let go and coughed lightly to cover my embarrassment. A faint blush appeared on Misty's ears. Soon, the police arrived and took Elias away. He had not only attacked us but also tried to kill Gloria. However, Gloria jumped out of the window, breaking both legs but surviving. When her father heard the news, he was so furious that his condition worsened significantly. When he went to see Gloria, he couldn't even remember his own name. After a few days in the hospital, Gloria recovered enough to send me many messages, asking to see me. I didn't go. There was nothing worth seeing, and there was nothing left to say between us. She sent me a very long message. It could be summarized into four words, loved, regretted. To my surprise, she said she had a dream where we got married. I spent every day trying to make her happy, accompanying her to eat, shop, and watch movies. She felt very happy and said that falling for Elias was the worst mistake she ever made. I thought about it but didn't reply to her. As the plane was about to board, I put on my headphones and sent a message to Misty. Roaming the world alone can be lonely. How about finding someone to go through it together? To my surprise, the red exclamation mark in front of the message disappeared. My heart skipped a beat. She replied in seconds with one word, get lost. I shrugged and boarded the plane. Sitting down and putting on my headphones, a familiar scent of perfume wafted into my nose. I opened my eyes to find Misty's beautiful face beside me. She sat down next to me and glanced out the window casually. I'm going abroad for further studies for a few years. But I clearly remembered that in my previous life. She didn't go to the country where my destination was. I smiled knowingly. When I first met you, I thought you were my lifeline. But you weren't. What? Her beautiful eyebrows raised slightly. I shook my head not saying the rest of the sentence. In this long and hurried world, take your time, wait patiently, and look forward to it slowly. The road ahead is long, and gentle things are bound to happen.